Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So I did a video, but I found out why I've been having recording problems. My SD card was bad. So now I have to go over everything I did on this bike since our last video. I do apologize for that inconvenience on that. All right, so the exhaust is not on, although it looks like it is. It's not, it's, it's loose. There is a spacer up inside here that I do not have. So I had to go ahead and order that. So the um, exhaust is just sat in there on the, all of its um, bolts. So what I had to do, I had two exhaust systems. I had the one that came off the other bike um, from Harvey Spooner. Actually, technically it was this bike, but I put the yellow front end on it. So um, that had a bunch of broken bolts. Let me grab that. But before I do, Take a moment, hit that subscribe button if you guys like repair videos. And uh, we'll get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a Okay, so we got you guys in the stand. So we're working on the exhaust. And the bike, the exhaust system that came from the Harvey Spooner bike had a bunch of broken bolts in it. Like that one, broken stud on the back. Um, the screws are all stripped out. And it was just a real wreck, Okay. Other than that, the thing is in excellent condition, and this is not bad. I'm going to fix this. This is still a good exhaust, so don't think I'm scrapping it. It's still good. We can still use that on another build. Boy, that was exhausting. Okay, so what I had to do on this one, this one had some uh, broken bolts down here, which was able just to heat them up and wind them out and put new screws and stuff in it. Okay, so where I left off on the bike is before the... I, I just put this exhaust on here. Um, but the last video that I did on this bike, I put the clamp for the air filter on there. I ordered the clamp that goes onto the air filter. Hooked up the throttle cable. I put the motor on. The motor is just held on with the two bolts down here and up top here. Got that on and I put the swing arm on it with the two bolts and the grommets. And pretty much that's it. Um, I put the... I just slid those in there so I didn't lose them. And the same thing with the back. I put the back ones on and these are brand new I bought. I, I'm, they just set in there. I didn't do that for video purposes. So in the last video, those weren't on there. I just threw those on there so I wouldn't lose them. And that's pretty much our, where we're at with the bike. You can see the clamp. It comes around the frames held on with one screw. Um, pretty much that's it. So you got one bolt, motor mount bolt here, one that's right here on the inside. I put the grommets, uh, the tank mount, I just set that onto the frame and then slid this bracket on there, which is actually obsolete for this. It doesn't really use anything. And I threw the two seat bolts through it. Other than that, it's exactly the way it was when we started doing the video. So what are we doing today? So today I'm working on the, um, the rear brake arm right here now this arm right here is better than the other one the other one's got a big dent in it and it's all pushed it's pushed over that way actually this one is just bent up so something hit it here and we're going to bend it down so i put the washer on here with the cotter pin and i didn't put the cotter pin in to tighten it so what we got to do is we got to get a pair of pliers or something to put onto here and kind of bend that back into place so that's what I'm doing right now. And once that's all set, then I'll have a good brake arm and we're good there. So parts that are on order as followed. I have the headlight assembly. Now I went with an older headlight assembly, not the newer one. The older one is just a round headlight. It doesn't have that crazy thing where the speedometer was because this bike wasn't equipped with that. So I went with the older style um, we call it the headlight for the Z50. Factory Z50 is just an older one. And it came with the wiring. I believe it came with the wiring. It's just headlight assembly, but the wiring attached to it. It's eBay. You never know. So I got the headlight coming and the harness. If the harness is not come with that headlight, then I got the other one I can repair. Now I got, so on order, I got the headlight with the wiring harness, possibly. The clamp for the air filter assembly, which goes right up in here. Okay, I don't want to put just a regular random clamp on it. And I want to make sure it's the factory one. I have the foot pegs with the kickstand. And I believe that's it. So there was four items. Oh yeah, and the, the reason why the exhaust is on there loose 
is because I'm missing the spacer that goes up underneath there. So we have on order right now the exhaust spacer, the clamp, the pegs, and the headlight assembly possibly with the harness. And that will complete the 90% of the ensemble there. And then um, we got to do tires, two tires, two tubes, um, four bearings, wheel bearings, and the brakes are good, so we're good there. Then after that, we got the seat, the seat pan, and the foam, and the cover, and then the tank, the fuel tank, and then that's pretty much it. The bike should be up and running and driving. So um, really not that much, and get this bike out of here because this bike has been right in my way. It's been a thorn in my side because I have so many projects. I keep tripping over this bike. So this bike actually is now staying in the house. <clears throat> so I can get all the stuff done to it in here. It's been stupid cold out. Five degrees. So I really haven't been out in the shed. It's been nuts. So let me get something I can use to fix that. Um, what do you call it there? The brake arm. And we'll get. Uh, we'll do it. Okay. So now. Get that like that. All right. You guys see that all right yep okay good all right so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try torquing on this thing downward if I can that's the that's kind of the problem with this is the where it's at you know some pressure. I try not to, I really don't want to heat it up with a torch because I don't want this thing to be all, you know, all over the place, you know. I think I got it. Oh, that is so close. So close. Very, very close, guys. Very, very close. Okay. That's it. That is close there. And then it's kind of little. Let's see. Now it's going to go a little bit more. Just a hair more. It is very, very, very close. Okay. Yeah. Just clear it now. Whew, okay. And it looks like it's got to go out. It's too in. So let's see if we can bring this part out. Hmm. I'll go get a pry bar. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this pry bar and we're going to pry this away from the engine a little bit all right but the problem is if we pry right here we have a chance of damage in this case so what we're going to do is see if we can find a board or something we can put in here to kind of go against the case so we can pry against the board kind of like that or so you know Very close, guys. Very, very close. That's pretty much where it needs to be. So what I'm what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get show you guys this. See this beam right here? This post? 
That's what my reference is. So that is straight and level. What I'm trying to do is get this foot peg rest pretty much parallel with that. And I can see I am pretty much right on. Now, no matter what you do, it's going to be up against the case. I mean, it's going to hit the case, but it's not going to be up that far. It's going to be down here like this. So I'm going to have plenty of clearance. I'm just trying to make sure I have the clearance I need and I'm not going to be chafing into the case. So here's straight and I'm going to try to get this part right here straight. So it's in the right area, you know. And in order to do that, I'm going to fry it out a little bit more. block of wood. You never want to pry on a case. It's just not a good practice. Oops, sorry. Okay. I'll try that. So I got good clearance there. And that's straight. So here's straight here. I'm just about gonna move this down just a little bit more. It's literally just a hair off. Because when the brake is up, this is gonna be back here like this. And this is too tipped in, so we gotta plane it out a little bit more. The bike is also at an angle. Alright, so let's get that. Do that one more time. I'm a perfectionist, I'm sorry. But at least you guys see what's involved. What? Doing this type of stuff. You know? I would say that is good. Goes back here like this. Uh, still a little out. Still a little out. Let me straighten up right back. Okay. So after a, a couple more little tweaks, that's sitting right where it needs to be. So that's going to be perfect for this. And now we'll bend over this little uh, cotter pin thingy, majiggy doohickey thingy, what's it? And then the foot brake will be here. We're all set. Okay. I'm going from the under to up. This is going to bend it right over. This way. Just doesn't get caught if you go this way. So now it's not sticking up. All right, so the overall bike itself is coming along quite well. We're gonna have, so next time we work on this bike, I'm gonna wait to work on this bike until we get all the parts and pieces to it um, for like the, the foot pegs, the headlight assembly, the wiring, that'll be the next process on this bike. And then we'll take it to that level right there. Um, as for everything else on the bike, the tires and the tubes, um, I'm going to order those at a later date and uh, we'll do the bearings. So we're just going to do the next one when we get all the parts for this bike, you know, like the foot pegs, the headlight, the wiring, and do all that stuff, the clamp. We'll, we'll do a video, get all that stuff put on the bike, get the exhaust tightened down, and get that part all done. And uh, then at, after that, we'll reassess, see what we need for parts and pieces. And then we'll go from there. But this bike right here is all set to be moved out to the uh, out to the back where the other bikes are. So, which is great. Now we can work, concentrate on working on Dave's motor. Get that out of there because I just have no space. I'm I'm running out of space and I'm running out of space quickly. And we still have Alvin's bike, which I wanted to do a video on the other night, but we just couldn't do it because of the temperature outside. It was brutal, and um, so. We're just going to keep plugging away at them, guys, one bike at a time. So, um, what do you call it there? So, what else was there? 
when you're working on a bike like this, a lot of people ask me, Kevin, how come you don't restore that bike right to factory? And here's the thing with that. It's like I said before, you want to, I want to be able to ride this thing and enjoy it before I get to that point. I may later on down the road, I know I'm going to be doing some restoration stuff and how to bring parts back uh, from the brink of death. But um, I want to ride this bike first off. And the second thing, this step right here in restoration is the first and most important step. Is to make sure your bike is complete. You want to search the web and find the best parts that you can find. Get the bike 100% together and correct. When the bike is 100% correct, then you can go ahead and start tearing off the carburetor and all these parts and pieces and sandblasting them and remachining them and um, cleaning them up and making them look like brand new. Ultimately, a restored bike is the same thing you're doing now. It's just like brand new. So, like, I didn't do a knockout paint job on this bike. It's got uh, two coats of primer, two coats of black, a clear, and then, uh, what do you call it, dear? And then it's all basically it, you know? So, it's nothing It's nothing crazy. The um, If I was to restore this bike, then I'd probably um, powder coat the whole frame and, and get it done that way, which is probably what I'm going to do eventually. But in order to do that, I need to have good bones. And to have good bones... You need to start off with something like this. Sorry about that. So as I was saying, you want to make sure you have some good bones so you can start the restoration project. And then as we go, we'll, we'll start looking for the decals. Because when you restore these things, you're going to want to look for this decal. But if you remove this decal, you're going to forget that decal is there. Another thing, when you're working on these old bikes, go on Google Type in the type of bikes and then up in the top corner there, click on images and you can see if your bike is missing anything. And that is a huge help when you guys are doing these type of restore projects. So don't be afraid to, you know, look up your bike, check it out and make sure you have all the parts and pieces. Certain things like this clamp right here, you wouldn't know what that clamp looked like if it wasn't there. So images help. And there's all kinds of images on, on Google. Um, the proper air filter assembly, the proper clamp, the carburetor, the you know all the type of stuff. These these covers here, you know, what do they look like? Are they circles? Are they diamonds? Do they are they slots? You won't know until you look on um, and look up other pictures of the bike because, once again, most of the time when you're going into one of these bikes, you're going into it for the very first time. And that is the actual most scary time when you get a bike, a project, and you're like, all right, I'm going to rip this whole bike down. I'm going to restore it from the ground up. And then you fall short. Why did you fall short? You fell short because you didn't put the bolts back in the frame where they belong. You didn't label your bags. And that's what we teach. We teach how to do all that type of stuff. What to look for. On a Honda, there's really, I call them money pots on Kawasaki's, like, the air filter box is a money pot. This clamp is a money pot. Um, anything that would be considered like like this tail light is a money pot. But on these, that's not really the case. You can get everything's pretty much readily available for a Honda. Like I was able to get this brand spanking new old stock fender. You know, it costs a little bit of money, but you can get it. So that right there would be considered a money pot. I wasn't going to replace this right here with a Chinese knockoff. On a Honda, I have no Chinese parts onto this bike at all, so I don't want to start now. So when you're doing a bike, you want it to be exact. So this is made by Stanley. It is the factory um, tail light for this bike, factory fender. It actually came with this bike. I didn't have to buy this. That was nice. So that's what I consider a money part. Um, the kickstarters, money parts. The exhaust, the covers, money parts. The tip, money part. Fender, front fender, money pot, these bellows, these little caps here. Those are all money pot. Anything that can be, uh, what do you call it, the easily worn out or broken or missing. A lot of times you go look at a bike and they'll want stupid money for it. So you go down there and he's got a, a Z50 and he's like, I want uh, two grand for the bike and it's missing all the covers. This tip right here is missing. The tail light's missing. The fender's there, but it's got a big crack in it. Um, the switches are all missing, the front fender is all bent to hell, and it's got one 
one bellow on it. The other one's cut in half and ripped right off and they're ready to fall apart. And he's like, oh, it's a Honda. So I should be able to get all the money for it. And, you know, you look at him like, dude, really? And then you go look on eBay and you'll see his taillight. You'll see his, his exhaust tip. Because what they do is they sell the bikes for try to get full price for it. But they'll take some of the money stuff off. They'll take the air cleaner off. Oh, it didn't have that on. You get one of those little cone filters. And then they'll go and sell that thing for like a hundred bucks on, online. You, you see what I'm saying? And you got to be careful for, for schnauzers like that. You know, those people are just terrible. So be careful who you talk to. And, you know, come up with a fair price. When you're looking at a bike, you want to be able to go, okay, this fender is going to cost me X amount of dollars. Taillight's going to cost me X amount of dollars. This cover is going to cost me X amount of dollars. The air, air filter. Listen, you're missing all what I call money parts off this bike. This bike with just the engine on it, which you could pick these engines up for like 400 bucks. You know, an actual Z50. I'm not talking about a Chinese cheap knockoff. You can find a decent motor on eBay. You know, even some of them even come with the carburetors on them. But uh, you can find a nice motor for running between four, four fifty. Okay, so realistically, that's the bike. Then you look at the frame and we see what it's missing, what it needs. You know, if it's missing the covers and all this other stuff. Now you're into some money. So be careful what you what you buy because you never know what you know what they're gonna do. You know what I mean? Whether after. I mean, this bike right here was hammered um, when Harvey Spooner had it. He didn't do it, but the front forks were bent. We were able to put straight ones on there. Used the bellows from it. The caps from the other one. One was broken. One was bent. Um, these are the, the rubbers from the other, the white bike. That's the white frame right there. It was just painted white. Um, we got that back to black. Um, this exhaust system right here uh, came from a uh, subscriber. The engine itself came from a um, donation from a subscriber with the carburetor. It was complete. Um, it was missing the, um, the flywheel, so we took the one off the Harry Spooner bike, put it on this one, and we heard this one run. So we know this is a good motor. We heard it run. Um, it shifted into neutral, no problem. This is the how this, um, air filter and bracket right here came off the yellow bike from Harvey Spooner. Um, so that worked out well. We have, um, pretty much the only thing I do is take off the fork stuff. I cleaned up the fender a little bit. The brakes... The, um, the rear swing arm is off the black bike, the black and yellow bike, which is now back onto this one on the white frame. I bought the fender, and he had the taillight. So, and then one of the bikes had a good tank mount, so tank rubber here. It had good grommets. One bike had a coil, one didn't. So I was, I was literally able to take parts from one bike and put them onto the other. And now we have a whole complete parts, you know, we have a, a motor that works. We have a parts motor. And, um, and this has all the, all the parts and pieces to it. So I, I really can't complain. And, um, it, it's going to work out pretty nice. So we had two seats. One had a bad seat pan. The other one had a good seat pan. So we're going to take the good one. It'll go on this bike. And by the time we're all, all said and done and into this bike, we're still going to be into this bike for, you know, probably 700 bucks. You know, by the time it's all said and done, you're like, wow, really? This right here was like 150 this tilt this uh fender okay um motor was donated but the pegs that's a hundred bucks for the pegs with the kickstand um let's see the tank is going to be a hundred bucks so that's that's three over 350 right there um then the tires and tubes is a hundred bucks so there's you know what are we up to five already so it, it goes quick you don't realize it but you can be into these bikes for some crazy money and then the seat the you know the seat foam the, the cover the tank the headlight assembly that was a hundred bucks so yeah we're gonna be into this bike for like 700 bucks and that is with a good carcass good frame um not putting my labor in there and the good thing about this is it came with a parts bike so we were able to get the smalls the smalls are the bellows the caps the fender the small front front fender the bolts the proper bolts um, the brake assemblies, you know, these are small things, the carburetor, the air filter, the, the clamps, the, the mount, the coil, you know, the tail light, all the small stuff is on there. So I, I was able to lock out with that, you know, and we have the side cover for the other side that goes over here on the side over here. So we got the side cover that's on the engine. 
Um, and you, you see this little plastic thing right here. We don't really, you know, it doesn't really matter, but we have the cover that goes right here. So we have a lot of the small stuff, you know, the, the knobs, those are there, the switch. This switch right here needs to be replaced, but I mean, for the most part, it's, it's pretty darn good shape. We bought the uh, new adjusters. So, I mean, realistically, this bike is in really, really good shape for what it is and what we have to do to it. So, I'm really looking forward to riding this thing around. It's going to be a nice runner, you know. But, like I said, once again, it's about the smalls. The small little pieces. The insignificant pieces. Like the little rubber that goes on the on the um, throttle cable. The um, It had this. I had to buy the boot. And now i got to buy the clamp. You know, I already ordered the clamp. So, that's on its way. But, it's the small stuff that really... That really get you, you know, when you start adding up all those little insignificant, all those teeny little parts, you know. So, anyway, I hope you guys want learn something from this one. There's, there's still, like I said, there's a whole lot more we're going to be doing on it. I do apologize for the other video not going through. The SD card is junk. So, I bought a new one, so we'll be able to do more recording with it. Um, and other than that, I really didn't do much to the bike. I just put the motor on with two bolts, the swing on with two bolts. The exhaust I just set on there, so we have to take that off. I'm waiting for the ring to go, you know, that comes in. It goes up underneath here. I thought I had one. That's not for this. That's for something else. Um, and everything else you guys saw me do. So, um, we're pretty much set on that. So, anyway, guys, I want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And um, I will be talking to you guys later. I'm out.